Hello folks and welcome to the Vertigo Tea Party and let's try Luna's Wandering Star. It's by Serenity Forge who ran a successful Kickstarter campaign. It's also currently on Steam Greenlight as you can see here. So if you like what you see, go vote for it. You can pick it up for $9.95 for both Windows and Mac. And you can also get it from the official site, the Sora and others. I will have all relevant links, including the Greenlight link and the purchase link in the description below the video. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, this is another one of the kind of space physics games. We've seen a few of those. I don't think one, the last one I did was Solar Flux a while back. But it's interesting in that, first off, it's taking place, as you can see, in our solar system. And each planet has a different, different uh, gimmick, if you will. So let's try Mercury. You can see I've already finished 100% of it. And gold asteroids are the bonus asteroid. They're harder to get. But uh, you are rewarded with more planets, or unlock more planets when you get more of the gold ones. So let's start off right about on five, since I'm missing on that one. Every time you start up, it'll give you a, just kind of a brief read me. Sometimes it's just something funny. Sometimes it's uh, just something observant or factually true. And sometimes it's actually game related as far as skill wise. So uh, I'm not going to go through all the planets because I haven't unlocked them all. But uh, I will kick through some of these just to show you the different uh, different abilities you have on each planet. And none of them carry over, so you have one ability per planet. For Mercury, we have the choice of shooting the moon off, or asteroid, I guess, technically is what we're, we're using. Now, if you notice the kind of the gray circle around the moon that I'm controlling, you'll see as it grabs these asteroids, it will fill up. Now, we're going to try to get the golds, because those are what unlocks extra planets. Now, some of these asteroids, as you can see that these do, are affected by gravity, so they will get pulled in. Now, you can see we got zero, and it, of course, chides me for that, as it should. I deserve it. So if I hit spacebar, it resets. Uh, let's try to do it a little faster. Obviously, I didn't get this one, so I'm not that good at it. I'm not good at these games, period. And honestly, this is a genre I'm not super crazy about in general, but Again, that's partially just because I'm not very good at these games. Now, I can actually shoot off really fast if I want. Now, obviously, we don't want to do that. Let's go back to the the levels list here because I am terrible at that level. The boomerang. Let's do this one. Astronauts use this strategy to change direction while keeping the same speed. Now, they usually check their math instead of just flipping the rockets willy-nilly. I don't guess that's probably accurate because I definitely do willy-nilly. Now, you can zoom out. Move the map around if you need to. Most of the time, it's about where I want it to be, though. So I'm going to push this, and we're going to try to arc. Now, the little light blue you can see, that's the expected trajectory. Now, there are things that can change that. So, for example, as I pick up more asteroids, I'm picking up more mass. The entire point of a level is to fill your mass, and then you win. Well, as you get more mass, you all your physics handle differently, and this arc does not consider that. So let's go ahead and just try to do exactly what it says. And that should scoop us right past it, right? We should get all of that. So let's try it, see what happens. Again, you can kind of see the blue fill in. Now I actually managed to get both, or all three of the golden asteroids there, which is pretty impressive. So why is getting the golden asteroids difficult? The big problem with getting them is that a lot of times you end up running into the blue asteroids and once you hit your full mass, you can't keep going. You stop immediately. So let's say I want to get these three. I'm going to pull this. I'm going to try to go in an arc around Mercury here. And for some reason it didn't go. Still not going. There it goes. It wasn't hitting the key. Oh, th oh that's right, because you have two moons. Uh, sometimes you have two moons. This has only happened a couple times for me. But let's uh, try to, And if your moons run into each other, they will collide. And you will lose. So if you break either of your moons in these stages, you lose automatically. Oops. You can also hit space to reset. So if you don't want to wait, you can also hold shift and it speeds up. But basically it just plays it faster at two times speed. Also, you'll notice down here, let's just go ahead and do this. You have a timer and the timer is different per level. So not only do you have to get, well, in this case, both of your asteroid slash moons full, you have to do it before the time is out. It's probably not a great level to show. Just kind of showing, trying to show you a, a bunch of the variety of levels that you might see. Now, this is a super early level. So needless to say, this one's not going to be too difficult. It's just trying to teach you the basics of the game. Of course, I say that now I'm not going to get it. So we're just going to push up. 
And the plant, the, of course, the physics of the planet will pull me down. And as you would expect, if you get close to the planet, you'll see the gravitational pull of the planet will sling me down that way. So you have to factor that and you have to factor in your own mass. You can also, I've seen some of these asteroids that do move. The ones that are stationary won't move, I don't think. But the, which I guess that makes why they're stationary. But the, the one asteroids that move can be affected by your, your moon's gravity. So another thing to keep in mind here. Let's go ahead and move on to Venus. What was Venus? Oh, Venus was the rocky propulsion. That's not a great level to show off here. And I picked the same one. Good job. Good job, me. Let's go to two. So yeah, as you can see, the challenge here is like, I want all the I want all the blues. Now this one I have like a propulsion, and you can see these asteroids are moving towards me, and they actually are affected by my gravity just a bit, which I don't have a lot of gravity. So I wanted to get the gold, but oops, I can't get them because I've already filled my mass. And let's see, that's that planet. Let's go out. I'm just trying to show you the different different types because. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious the type of game this is, and it's one of those games that I think very quickly you'll decide if you are into this type of thing or not. Like I see, personally, I'm usually not, because I'm not good at these physics space type puzzles, but it's still enjoyable, and I think it's something that would be enjoyable to people who like it. I really like the theme of being in your solar system, and some of these gimmicks, and we're going to use the word gimmicks even though it has a negative connotation, the gimmicks of these planets, uh, some of them are pretty neat. For example, the Earth, I think, is one of the cooler ones. Uh, with this one, the I can move the mouse in and out, and this affects the Earth's gravitational pull. So if I've got it like this, my pull, or gravitational pull, becomes a lot higher, and it pulls the moon in faster. Now, these mines we obviously want to avoid, because you know, there's lots of space mines out there, as you as you know. So you can shoot it and then kind of you know finagle it around that, and then we want to get it back in. But you also don't want your moon to hit that planet, because the planet will also kill you. So there's a lot of prediction going on. <laughs> Luckily, I was like just about to hit that mine. There's a lot of pre prediction that you have to do, and you need to do it quickly as well, because you need to be able to decide. You can't just go, oh, I need to move now, and then change your gravity. It won't be fast enough. You have to learn ahead of time, like, oh, I'm going to need to make a big arc coming up. I better change my gravity. That's the way it is for pretty much all of these. Whatever the gimmick is, a lot of times you end up, oops, I did it totally the opposite. Whatever the, the challenge or the, the power you have is for that planet, generally you have to kind of think ahead. And that's probably the part where I completely fail on because I'm not good at, at looking ahead and thinking, oh, I need, to, I need to go ahead and start changing gravity now because in three seconds, I'm going to ram into the earth. I'm like, oh crap, I'm about to ram into the earth in like half a second. I better change gravity. And by then it's way too late. Now these purple are like asteroid fields and hitting them will cut your time, your travel time in half. Pull it in here. I promise you I did beat a lot of these, but they took uh, quite a bit of finagling, I can say, especially for me, because I don't tend to be good at these. We want to get it in, but we don't want to hit the planet. We definitely don't want to hit the stars or the asteroids either. Eh, I don't think we're going to do it. We can go ahead and reset it any time. Like I said, you can hit shift and you can see it just speeds everything up. So if you don't want to change anything. Uh, also, if you look back at the map here, the overall map, you can see how many golden asteroids are on each planet. I think it's always three. And you can see how many I've gotten. So for here, it's gold because I've gotten all three golden asteroids. And here I have not gotten, I've only got one and the other two are blank. Let's try one that I've actually been successful with. See how well we can do. Probably not well. I don't remember how I did this one, which I guess is not surprising. I did it a whole day ago. Oh, oh, ah, see, we have to, if that one, if we're going to get that last, we need to get one more blue asteroid. So we need to I'm try to cut that a little tight. Pull the gravity in. Ah, see, there we go. And that, again, I made it look easy because I'm really good at these types of games. I'm not good at these games at all. But some of these, trust me, I skipped them because not only because I was trying to see as many levels as possible, 
before I did this let's try but because I tried over and over to get all the golden asteroids and I failed. So I really like the level design so far. They feel challenging and each each like each level doesn't feel like I am doing the same thing just with a slightly variation. Even though it's the same gimmick, I feel the layout of the planets is done in such a way that I'm actually addressing a new problem. Now it might be you know somewhat related to an issue re earlier issue but again i don't feel like oh it's just the same puzzle but things are just slightly moved around it's again it's done in a way that it, each puzzle feels fresh even on the same planet if that feels if that makes sense and then around the time the mechanic starts to get a little bit stale a new i find a new planet that i've had access to which is pretty neat now see obviously beating most of these stages is easy at least i'm not even to jupiter yet though but the, the real challenge comes from getting the gold asteroids. And we all know that's what you really want to do. Just beating the level is not good enough. And even the game will make fun of you. And like, if, for example, if you get two asteroids instead of three, sometimes the game will think, oh, that's pretty good, you know, for a casual. It's very much about the making fun of the player humor, which I can absolutely appreciate. I want to try to... Nope. I want to grab those. Try one more try at this and we'll check out another planet. Let's get back. See, I'm not good at predicting. I was trying to go and grab that yellow, and obviously I'm not very good at that. Let's try another planet. Mars. This might I think this is the furthest planet that I have. Yes. And Mars is pretty cool because you have a friggin' laser beam. Well, lasers. I like the music for this area too. So I've got a laser, but I've only got two shots. And anytime you have a limited quantity of whatever your special ability is, it's listed at the top left. So in here, in these maps, these later maps, you don't control yourself directly. Now, like the, in these, you don't control yourself at all. Like I don't think the laser blast actually move you at all. No, there's no like put no kickback on the laser blasts. You just have to kind of decide. All right, what do I want to live? either spend my limited number of blasts on, or you might have a bunch of blasts, but you've only got so much time, because there is a little bit of a reload between when you shoot. So you have to keep that in mind. So I want to shoot, oops, I shot the cluster. I don't really want to do that. Oh, that actually might work out though. Nope, because we want to grab this last one, of course. So let's, what happens if we don't shoot this one? Oh, we avoid it. So we don't really need to shoot that one. That one's just there to trick me. We hit the asteroid field. Okay, we definitely either want to destroy the asteroid field or we want to destroy the mine. So let's, I'm gonna hold shift and get it sped up. I'm gonna destroy the asteroid field this time. We're gonna sneak by the mine just barely. So that's not gonna work. So I think you can see the solution here. We're going to, sh oops. We are going to shoot the mine field. We're gonna go over here and we're gonna blow up that mine. Or asteroid and then get that one so again i i really like again even despite not liking this genre generally i really like the variety of the levels and i i'm a fan of space anyway so i am i do like it more in that aspect just because it's got space uh, and the music's pretty good uh, this music in particular i find very fitting especially because you have a laser i don't feel like that i feel like that was pretty on purpose so we're gonna zoom out here uh oh, so now we're actually being attacked somewhat. Oh, God. Nope, nope. All right. So we, again, you got to keep in mind there is a timer or countdown, a reload time on your blasts. So you need to figure out what your threats are. We only got six of 12. Oh, and we got only blues. So that's not acceptable. So we're going to shoot these lasers. I wish it didn't zoom in every time. If I zoom out, I don't want you to zoom back in. So now the blues are kind of my enemies as well because I don't want them because I want the yellows. Let's try one more time and see how many we can get. I'm going to kill as many blues as possible as well. Obviously the reds are the priorities. Ah, I missed. I, need to, I almost killed the blue. Oh, I'm out of lasers though. So yeah, failed again. And we only got, what, two? So, yeah, you can see how they really change the variety per level, even when it's the same power or the same, 
gimmick or whatever you want to call it. So again, if you like this type of game, I definitely think this is something that another good game to play if you like those types of like space physicy type puzzles. Now I do want to show you the online. It does come with a level editor. I'm not going to bother showing you that because I didn't even try it and I'm sure I'd be terrible at it. But there are a bunch of user made levels. You can sort by top, new, top, new, or by name. We're going to name it, go with top. Now this sounds like a good name. It's a level name, what the WTF, designed by Satan. And what could possibly happen? Ah, uh, lots of explosion. That's good. Ah, uh, yeah. Nice music, too. All right, let's go ahead and get started here. And, oh, good lord. So we have to try to see how if we can actually beat this level as possible. I don't know. We want to shoot that. I honestly have no idea this is even beatable. Probably not. Probably not. Let's try one other level. They're not all like that. This one was actually pretty interesting, I thought. So this one, you have lasers. At the beginning of the levels, it'll tell you what you have. And of course, you only got eight. So you have to be careful what you use it for. Oh, and see, we've already ran out. If we got two out of three, that's not too bad. Let's try it again. Again, we use the laser as... Oops. <laughs> and I shot the yellow. Brilliant. Let's just reset. I thought I'd already got it, but shoot this. We don't want that. Oh, we didn't want that. We didn't want that. Oh. So yeah, some of it is uh, quick reaction time. And one of it's, and part of it is strategizing, like planning out like, okay, which ones do I have to shoot? Which ones can I not shoot? Because I do not want to get the red. So yeah, there is some quickness and I, you know, and this is a user created level, keep in mind. So that is pretty, pretty darn neat. But yeah, let's go ahead and go out. And lastly, I'll show you the options real quick. Oh, that's the level editor, not the options. Good job. Uh, we have the music slider and the sound slider, which again, I love when you have these two separate. You can change your mouse and you can invert rockets. What that means is that there's one stage. Did I skip the stage where I control with rockets? Oh, yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't. But uh, where by default, you click where you want to boost to. You can invert that so you're clicking where you want to boost from. So, for example, let's say that I was Jupiter and I was on that level where I can click the boost. If I wanted to go here, let's say, I would click here by default and I would try it and the boost would just come out from this side. But if you're used to other games where you're actually clicking the direction you're, you are boosting from, then you'd want to click invert and click here because naturally I actually thought I would want to click where I was going. But when I stopped kind of thinking about it and focusing it, I found myself clicking behind where I would expect the propulsion to come from. So that option is there for you. So there, anyway, yes, that is Luna's Wandering Stars. If you like what you see, make sure go vote for it on Steam Greenlight. Even if you're not going to purchase it immediately, go ahead and support them on Steam Greenlight. And again, they are, it is available for $9.95. There seems like a pretty decent amount of levels, especially if you're the type who wants to try to get all of the extra golden asteroids. I think you can get your money's worth if you're into this type of genre and more so that you can play other people's levels or create your own levels. So thanks again for watching. Again, this is Luna's Wandering Stars. If you guys like this video, make sure to leave comments. Let me know what you thought of this game. And if you've tried this game, or if you buy it, definitely let me know in the comments. I want to hear what your thoughts are on as well, or th your thoughts are as well. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and I will see you next time. Step back though. We are getting this I, I do hate up you, about a mobile game. I mean, I do hate you though. I want to be 100% <laughs> clear with a moment of seriousness. I hate your guts.